guys, it's Dan with Architect, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to choose a Mac for architecture. So the first step that you want to do is figure out which MacBook is going to be the MacBook for you. So what we do is we go to Apple's website, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom, and we're going to do Shop for Education if you're a college student. And we'll do Shop for College. Then what we do is we go up to the top and click on Mac. And then over here, we're gonna click on MacBook Pro 16 inch. All right, then we go to the right and click the blue buy button. And we're gonna choose a 16 inch MacBook Pro and we're gonna do the one on the right. The reason we're doing that is it is the eight core processor comes standard with one terabyte of storage and then it has the upgraded GPU. We wanna have the eight core processor it makes it a lot faster and we want to have one terabyte of storage uh, as a default because you're gonna need at least that much storage for using a Mac for architecture. The reason we're gonna need that much storage is because we're going to be partitioning the hard drive and we need enough storage for the Windows side and the Mac OS side. So here, we're going to stick with the processor that comes standard with it, the 2.3 gigahertz, eight core, ninth generation i9 processor that turbo boosts up to 4.8 gigahertz. You could update to the 2.4 that turbo boosts up to five gigahertz, but in the reviews that I've looked at, it doesn't really ever hit the five gigahertz. So it, it's more gonna just be a waste of money for you. And you're not gonna see really any difference in performance there. For your RAM, you're gonna for sure wanna do the 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it'll make it so your computer runs smoother and kind of future proofs it for longer. You could do the 64 gigs, but it is pretty expensive. If you have the extra cash, go ahead and do that. But definitely 32 gigs is not that much of a upgrade or a very expensive upgrade. And then for the GPU, you could do either of these. The one that I did is the 5500M with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And it's only a $90 upgrade. So I would suggest to do this one. And otherwise they're the same GPU. This one just can handle more things at once. And uh, if there's a rendering software or even games that you're playing with it that need more gigs, uh, this will have it. This will do things just fine that require four gigs or less, but if it's anything above it, it'll slow down. So I would future-proof yours and only for $90, get this one. And then you could stick with the one terabyte of storage or you could go more as well. And then down here, you go to add to bag. Once you do that, it's gonna give you the option of getting Apple Care Plus. And I would suggest getting Apple Care Plus for sure. It's gonna protect you for three years for accidental damage. Any sort of thing that goes on, uh, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. And since you'll be having this throughout college or through your profession, it's just gonna be helpful and for not too much money. You just add to bag. I know many of you probably want to use some of the Macs that you currently have. Maybe you think it'd be fast enough and it very well could be. I mean, if you have a Mac, try doing the steps that I uh, walk you through in this video and see if it works for you, see how fast it will render your designs and make the choice for yourself if you need an upgraded or updated model. But from my research, I found that this is the MacBook to get. If you're going to get a new one, um, it's going to be the fastest and best that you can get that keeps up with the computers that they suggest for you to get for architecture, at least for architecture school. So the second step that you're going to do is you're going to install Bootcamp onto your Mac. So your MacBook Pro already has Bootcamp downloaded onto it. It's an Apple product. It comes built into your MacBook. And essentially Bootcamp, what it does is it's designed to make it so you can use your Mac for Windows. Um, so you'll be able to partition your hard drive to be part Windows operating system and part Mac operating system. So honestly, it's the first step that you'll want to take because once you partition it, it will have part of your hard drive dedicated to Windows and part to Mac. And my advice to you would be to partition it so that 400 gigs of it goes to Windows and then 600 gigs to your Mac side. If you have more than one terabyte, then you can play around with it to what will suit you best. 
So to access Bootcamp, what you do is I'm going to go up to the Apple logo icon in the left corner. I'm going to go to restart and restart my computer. And then while I'm doing that, I'm going to hold in the option key. Click restart. And I'm going to hold in the option key. And while I'm holding in this option key, the screen's going to turn black. Keep pulling it in. As soon as the Apple logo goes up, it's going to show two different sides to it. It's going to show a um, it's going to show the Mac side on the right and then a Windows partition on the left. And then I just arrow it over to the left, press enter, and it's going to open up the, um, the Windows partition. As soon as it opens up, you log in, you're in Windows, and you can use all your programs. I won't go into detail on how to install Bootcamp onto your computer. I'll attach a link um, in the description of my video that shows how to install it very well. The reason I had to install Bootcamp is because Bootcamp allows us so you can use the GPU that's in it to use rendering softwares. So the third step that you're going to want to do is download the programs onto your Windows side in Bootcamp. So the programs you're going to want to download that are only native to Windows would be the newest version of Revit. Rhinoceros 3D, and maybe AutoCAD. The other programs you want to download alongside those will be your rendering software such as Enscape and Lumia. So there is another option aside from Bootcamp that you can use to use Windows on your Mac. The only thing is you can't substitute it for Bootcamp. You need Bootcamp to do this. So the option I'm talking about is it's called a virtual machine and the program that I've used is Parallels Desktop. So you do have to pay for this. You can either do a yearly subscription or you could do a one-time purchase. So with it, it essentially takes the multiple desktops that you can have on your Mac to where you can use your gesture of three fingers and swipe up and it'll bring up all your desktops that you've opened. Um, you can have one of those desktops essentially be Windows. So I have Revit downloaded on my virtual machine on Parallels and all I have to do is gesture over to the right and it goes right over to Windows. And I'm in Revit designing. The only thing about Parallels Desktop is it doesn't allow you to use the rendering softwares like Enscape and Lumion. They just aren't compatible with each other. So you can't do your renderings in there, but you can do all your design in there. So for me, what I do that works well for my workflow, I do about 70% of my designing in Parallels because I'm in my Mac ecosystem. I can be working on my Mac, and I just swipe over um, in Windows and Revit. So your next step would be to set up a Google Drive or maybe a OneDrive file, something that makes it so you can save your files from either Bootcamp or from your Mac side and access it on either side. So what I mean by that is as a student, you get unlimited Google Drive storage. So what I do is I have a folder that I save all of my um, renderings, all of my Revit files in my Windows partition in Bootcamp. I'll save all that in there, and then when I go back over into the Mac side, I will open up my Google Drive and then bring all those files into my Mac and I can do everything. And if I design something on Revit side in my Parallels desktop on my Mac, save it to Google, access it in the Windows portion. Another thing that people will say is that it's inconvenient to have to restart your computer to use Bootcamp. And it's true, for Bootcamp, you have to restart your computer to boot into Windows, and you have to restart it again to boot back into the Mac side. But it's really not that big of an issue. If you're not doing it super often, it doesn't really matter. And even if you are doing it super often, if you're a Mac person, that's a small price to pay for being able to use a Mac for architecture. I find that it doesn't bother me at all. The nice thing with using a Mac is if I'm using the Parallels desktop, so I'm still in my Mac OS, and I'm just swiping back and forth between Windows and the Mac, I can use my tablet, for instance. 
I can use uh, it as a drawing pad with the new Mac OS Catalina. And so I can draw in it, I can use Photoshop in it, and I can even use Revit on it. I can bring it over and use my pencil to draw the walls. And there's certain things that, I mean, obviously it wasn't meant for using the pencil, but it's a pretty cool feature that you can use. Well, I hope this video helps you with your decision on whether or not to get a MacBook for architecture. Uh, if you do decide to and you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I'd be happy to get back to you with any questions. Otherwise, have yourself a great day.